Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox, Visual Studio dot extensibility editions about the brand new extensibility model for Visual Studio. And I'm your host, Leslie. I'm joined by Charles Willis, who is going to talk to us about user input. Tell us a little bit about yourself. What are you working on? I'm Charles. I have worked on Visual Studio. I'm currently working in Azure. I was a PM, software engineer. Uh, before that, I was an actor. Nothing you would have seen me in, though. Oh. <laughs> That's so cool. I can't act to save my life. So, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, user inputs, that sounds like a prim pretty prominent part of really any like website or things that people use. But why is it important in the extensibility area? And why should people add user inputs to their extensions? So sometimes you want to ask the user a question, like to pick from two choices or from three choices. Uh, this can be as simple as OK to confirm that something is going to happen um, or retry or abort, you know, um, uh, if you want to give the user the options. Uh, sometimes you need some text from them, um, like uh, what to name a project or even to get their name, how you want to address them. Cool. So it sounds like there's also a variety of different user inputs that you can do, like whether that's text box insertion or like a yes or no button click, that sort of thing. Correct. Uh, yes. And uh, what makes the uh, the user prompt API nice to you is that unlike remote dialogues where you have to fully spec out the UI yourself, um, we draw the UI for you. Uh, the API is simple and text and enum based. And um, and then, yeah, you just get a, a themed dialog box uh, with uh, the things you asked for. Cool. So... You got a demo to see what what what's the the final product of all this look like before we jump into the code behind it. Sure thing. So uh, I have um, a VS extensibility project that defines a command, and that command uses the user prompt API when it's invoked. Um, so I'll just go ahead and click it here, and you can see this is uh, one of the configurations where it asks for a uh, text. Uh, so I'll just say. The project name is awesome that we're going to configure. Uh, the title here, Configuration Assistant, is configurable uh, by the extender. And this one, uh, a text input always presents OK and cancel. And all the user prompt dialogs uh, include a, a close button as well. And these signals get forwarded uh, or returned back uh, to the caller. So you know what the user clicked on. So I'll click. Go ahead and click OK. Uh, and then here you can see the other format, um, which is to pick from a list of choices. Uh, we currently support you know, up to three options. And you can also uh, use an icon. Any known image moniker uh, will work there. Click one. Oh, auxiliary. Cool. The selected system may require additional resources. Uh, do you want to proceed? Uh, sure. Uh, we've got, you know, standard configurations for uh, warning and error and info. Uh, I'll just click OK there. This is an example of a confirmation prompt where you just want the user to confirm that they've seen it. Cool. And there, that's that's the end. We're back to the uh, to the text prompt uh, with a, a semi-custom icon uh, for feedback. Uh, yeah, that looks great. I mean, again, really straightforward. That's the theme of this mini series. Uh, and like the icons, I think we talked about icons in a previous episode too, but there's like a list of known icons that you can take advantage of that already exist, right? In addition to custom ones that you might want to add. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, they are uh, image moniker known values. And you can also check the documentation for how to create your own image moniker with a custom icon. We will support those as well. So what's happening under the hood? So under the hood, uh, one of the things that uh, all the VS extensibility APIs have in common is that they're they're async, right? Because we're potentially uh, using uh, out of process um, communication. This is the example for a simpler version uh, without icons, and just shows how easy it is to use. Uh, you grab the shell object off of the extensibility object. You call show prompt. You pass it the prompt, you pass it the configuration options. In this case, we're going to say, OK, we want OK cancel. 
And uh, this is a pre-configured set of prompt options that you can use. And a cancellation token, of course. And then you wait. And then other other things you can configure are, for instance, with OK Cancel, you might want the Cancel button as the default, for instance, to confirm a dangerous operation. Mm -hmm. uh, or you might just want a plain, plain old OK. And then if you want to get crazy, uh, you can completely configure the options yourself. And so this is how we would do one of those multi-select uh, button configurations. So if you need the power, it's there. If you don't, you can keep it simple, straightforward. Nice. So like on the topic of customization, I know like one of the perks about all this is that it sets up that interface for you. So you don't have to worry about trying to make sure the button is adjusted in the exact right if you don't want to. But what if you did? Can, can you do that? Can you override some of this? So if you want to get uh, really customized with the visuals, uh, you know, with the colors, with the position of the buttons, you can't do that with the user prompt API, but we do offer remote dialogues for that. And so, yeah, if you want a fully custom UI, remote dialogue is the way to go. If you want a dialogue that looks like default Visual Studio, that follows the theme, uh, that just follows good accessibility practices uh, and, all, and all the best practices that, that we can put into it, then go with, with user prompt. So people have the option to go rogue and go like super neon colors and <laughs> flashy effects. That they Absolutely. Uh, if that's what you want to do, we're not going to stop you. That's the beauty of VTS extensibility. All right. Well, uh, and sure. Uh, so here's uh, the advanced command. This is the one that we went through that we did the demo for. Uh, because there are more options, it does get a little more complex in places, but it can be as simple as this, for instance. Uh, show prompts. There's your prompt string. Um, your pre-configured prompt options. This is, says default, and then we're going to override the title. Uh, by default, it'll either be your localized extension name if that's registered and if it isn't registered then we default to just the string microsoft visual studio uh, but you can override the title here uh, and there you go um, override the title or say you want to add an icon uh, you can do that with a completely custom configuration prompt options here is similar to the grovebox example we looked at in the easier sample command and here's uh, a simpler version, somewhere in the middle, uh, where I'm going to start with OK Cancel. I'm going to override the title, and uh, I'm going to set a custom icon. And um, just to clarify, since we're using the word prompt a lot, which is becoming quite the popular word nowadays, <laughs> this is not yeah. associated with AI in, <laughs> in this particular definition, correct? Uh, correct. Uh, not in any way associated with uh, with AI. Uh, we just call it prompt because you're asking the user for input. That's all it means. Nothing to do with Copilot. It's human interaction only. You need to expand a vocabulary, I think, in the tech world. You like, there's too many synonyms or things that seem like synonyms, but really they mean different things in different contexts, especially now that AI is <laughs> starting to blow up. I'm like, uh, what do you mean when you say tool now? Are you talking about like tools in the context of like AJ chats or what? Yeah. When you say agent, are you talking about my travel agent? Uh, maybe right. not. <laughs> so I'm about to go on vacation next week. Like when I think agent, I'm thinking my travel agent. Although maybe, maybe there's a co-pilot agent in, in, uh, in Microsoft 365 that can help you, uh, when you're going on vacation. So exactly. So, <laughs> but, um, yeah, again, all of this looks very streamlined it it makes sense it's not a lot of code really i don't think you know we do all the work for you under the hood that's uh what we designed this api to be like i just need to ask the user to click okay before i do this thing that's the simplest way i can do that and the very simplest way you can do that is this right and then just check the return value as a boolean and 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 you're off um, easy peasy. Perfect. And then, yeah, from there, I assume just depending on the user actions that they respond with, then you can attach that to whatever other aspects of your extension you got going on. Absolutely. Additional commands and stuff. Great. So with the, uh, pick a, pick a theme example here, you can see that what it returns to you is the theme result. 
right? Uh, which is uh, an enum that I've defined uh, up here. Uh, and so based on whatever, whichever one of these buttons the user clicks, it will return that enum value to me. And in case the user clicks the little X in the corner of the dialog, I can configure here what is it going to return in that case. And so I said return none. So yeah, and then based on that, we don't do anything particular with it in the sample code. We just print it out uh, to the debug console. But yeah, uh, you can take the path you you need to take. Good stuff. So anything else before we close out on user prompts? Uh, let me just show you uh, one other thing here. Um, Pre-configured prompt options, uh, just so you know what we currently have available. And if you have ideas for other ones that you think would be very useful, well, and go to definition, doesn't do what you want it to. Okay. Uh, yeah. And if you have any feedback, you know, on other features you want to see, please provide that feedback, uh, including other pre-configured prompt options. Uh, but you can see we have OK, OK, cancel, retry, cancel, uh, error confirm, which will give you the error icon plus an OK button. Warning confirm, alert confirm, information confirm, help confirm. Uh, all pre-configured, uh, so you can just pass them to the show prompt with, with just the prompt if, if you want, and, and you're good to go. I'm loving all of these options, and I probably, again, have mentioned it before, but I'm also loving that this new model has a lot of good uh, documentation just via the go to definition route. So that's absolutely exciting yeah. as well. Yeah. As you mentioned, people should share their feedback and also people should try out the sample application, right? Because uh, it's just a sample that's available to anybody. So what's this one called? Uh, so this sample is called user prompt sample. Uh, it comes with two commands and uh, yeah, easy to find. Uh, the README has a lot of great information, uh, as uh, as does the article on uh, learn.microsoft.com. Great. Yeah, and we're going to have the link to the sample and all the other samples that we've been covering below in the description. So check it out if you haven't already. Yeah, I mean, user inputs, that's such a key part of, I think, a lot of different applications and tasks and extensions in this case that people would want to perform. So. Yeah, we can see a lot of people wanting to use this. And if you do use it, share your feedback since this is still an ongoing process and uh, try out the samples. And also, if you went through this whole episode having not seen the rest of this mini series and you're kind of confused, <laughs> one, kudos. And two, go check out the other seven ish episodes that I think we've done up to this point. Specifically, if you had to pick one episode relevant to this one the most, I I'd definitely say Mateo's on Remote UI. We've been bringing that up a couple times. And also just commands. That's kind of like the foundation of all of it. So check out those two episodes. Absolutely. I think that's all that we've got for this episode. So tune in next time when we're going to be talking about dialogue windows, which is slightly different. Thanks once again, Charles. Uh, yeah, it was great being here. Thank you, Leslie. And thanks to everyone else for watching. So until next time, happy coding. Mm -hmm.